You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weird Science Comics YouTube channel. I'm Jim, and despite the wishes of DC Comics, I'm here to review Spirit World number two, written by Alyssa Wong with art by Haining. I don't think there was anyone more shocked by how much I liked the first issue of Spirit World than I was. I'm not a huge Alyssa Wong fan, to put it nicely, and the prelude story from Lazarus Planet, it really didn't impress me at all. And seriously, if I didn't have to review that first issue for a DC Comics podcast and here on YouTube, I probably wouldn't have even given it a chance. I was glad I did, though, and was, again, surprised at how much I liked it, but also how many people liked it as well. So I was pretty pumped to read the second issue. And while I think that going in with higher expectations may have hurt my enjoyment a bit, I also think that Alyssa Wong's writing and overall focus or maybe lack of focus are more to blame here. Let's get into it right after I ask everybody to subscribe to the channel, like the video, enable notifications, and let me know what you thought of Spirit World number two in the comments below. The issue opens with a flashback of Xanthi's death 15 years in the past. And really, there is nothing like seeing a little girl die to get the fun rolling, right? But it's also the fact that it's so much like the beginning of the last issue. Now, maybe the play here is that while Xanthi was able to save their doppelganger in the present, nobody was around for them in the past. I don't know. It's very vague. And for me, it really was emotionless. It, it didn't have any emotions. And because of that, the scene just fell flat. And that unfortunately happens a bunch of times in this issue. If you remember, the last issue ended with the cliffhanger of Xanthi and Constantine running into Xanthi's mother as they were desperately trying to make their way to the spirit world to save Cassandra Kane. Well, we continue from there. Maybe minus the desperation to go save Cassandra. That kind of gets pushed aside, which is odd. But you would think that a mother finding her long-dead daughter and a long-dead daughter finding their family would have just a tiny bit of an emotional impact. And there is nothing here. The problem is that Wong seems more intent on possibly setting up some weird commentary than actually telling a story. And because of that, I keep saying it, it falls flat. We barely know Xanthi, and we know nothing at all about their family. So when you get the scene, it just feels very wooden, very forced, and really, really centering on and focusing on the idea of what Xanthi's name used to be, but now they want to be called Xanthi. And really, I don't understand what bad blood issues we have going on here because how can you have that much bad blood when it seems like Xanthi died when she was around five years old? Maybe you know you had a case of a hide and seek game gone bad or too early a bedtime? I don't know. The scene does end with the mother using some powers but I think her real superpower is instantly recognizing her dead daughter after 15 years. We then go off to the spirit world to check in on Cass, and that's what I'm all about so far in this book. And we do get our new friends, Popo and Bowen, as they take care of a handsy neighbor. But it feels like Wong is almost thinks that she has to force the story a bit here to give equal time to Cassandra when there's not a lot for Cassandra to do. So we kind of end up seeing Cassandra. They're fighting this guy. But then things shift more to Bowen, which is odd. And there's just not that much interesting things going on in the spirit world. Now, the best part of the book is when Xanthi's younger sister, Steffi, does come and confronts her older, deader sister and explain what happened after Xanthi died. It's a nice little deal. It's, it's kind of tragic. But Steffi was born after Xanthi died. And the family kind of used Steffi to maybe replace and forget about the tragedy uh, of Xanthi. And it's it's a nice deal here because earlier in the scenes, earlier in this issue, Xanthi did come off as cold and, and kind of not very nice. But this actually shows that Xanthi was watching over the family and the new sister here. But it all does show that Alyssa Wong 
can do some good character work if she tries. And I did get some feels here. And it also, you know, kind of out of nowhere, it does give Xanthi and Constantine their ticket to the spirit world. And away we go. The last quarter of the issue was Xanthi and Constantine fighting their way to get to the spirit world and save Cassandra. While my favorite Batgirl takes the back seat to Bowen, who is trying to convince a sus ex to help them. Weird focus. There are actually some cool Constantine callbacks here, but Alyssa Wong once again dumbs down a well-established kick-ass character in a lazy attempt to make her new character, you know, just a tiny bit better. Since I praised her for not doing that much last issue, I need to call her out for slipping back into that bad habit here. It's not, it's not awful, but it still ends up being a thing in the end. It at least appears that our characters will team up very soon, which is good because not only will that help the overall pacing of this book, but it will hopefully allow us to get an actual story going on as well. One of the biggest problems I'm having with these two issues now, we haven't really done that much to get an overall story. So let's hope we start getting that halfway through the miniseries next issue. It may seem like I hated this issue, but I was more disappointed with it. After two issues, it already feels like the book is getting away from Melissa Wong a bit here. And since I've seen that happen on things like Dr. Afra, Iron Fist, and the current Deadpool book, I would be lying if I said I wasn't already getting worried. It's nothing that can't be solved, though, with a solid third issue, so fingers crossed. I liked Haining's art. It's not going to blow your mind, but it fits the story. And reading it digitally as I do, Sebastian Chen's colors continue to pop. All of this all swirling around. I'm going to give Spirit World number two a six out of ten. I will be back to review the next issue for sure. But the next issue is going to have to do a bit more to keep me as inspired as I was. And I want to get back to that feeling I had with the first issue, being so pleasantly surprised that something that I expected to not be very good was actually pretty darn good. Hopefully we'll get there. But I'll be here and hopefully... So will you, and we'll go through it and have fun and whatnot. And with that, really, I do really love when people comment and let me know what they thought. And you don't have to agree with anything I say. Just tell me what you thought, and then we can discuss it. We can even argue, but it's it's fun arguing, right? It's not mean arguing. We'll just talk about things and whatnot. But thanks a lot for everybody and, and really the support that uh, we ended up getting for the idea that DC kind of you know, kind of dissed us. So thanks everybody for that support and all of it, everything here. I love doing these YouTube videos and it's all about interacting with everyone here. So thanks a lot and I will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.